Wisdom and strength are traits we learn about and are taught to apply in our Masonic degrees. When we think of brothers having these characteristics, we usually infer their positive aspects. But on occasion, we must take painful action that wisdom tells us is the right thing to do, but requires great strength to carry out and sometimes even greater strength to live with the consequences for the rest of our lives. In 1940, Brother Winston Churchill, a member of Rosemary Lodge 2851 in London, faced such a dilemma. It is difficult to think of Winston Churchill, considered to be one of World War II's great leaders, as a green and untested prime minister. But that is exactly what he was on May 10, 1940, the day he took office. He didn't have to wait long for that first test, however. On the same day, Nazi Germany invaded Belgium, Holland, and France. Churchill immediately realized that if, more likely when, the Germans controlled France, they would also control the French Navy, second only in power in Europe, to Britain's. He also knew the combined power of Hitler's navy with the French fleet would most likely spell defeat for his country. Churchill immediately appealed to United States President Franklin Roosevelt, a fellow Freemason and fellow Navy man, for help. He warned Roosevelt if the Germans controlled the French fleet, they would pose a serious threat to England and if they defeated England, they would control that Navy and pose an even greater threat to the United States. He asked Roosevelt for 50 of the older U.S. destroyers to help bolster the British Navy. In spite of what the two men had in common, President Roosevelt did not know Churchill and assumed the Nazis would roll over Britain as easily as they did France. He also had pledged to keep the United States out of war. He flatly denied the request and subsequent requests that Churchill made. On June 22, Germany took over most of France and Hitler ordered all French vessels to sail home. Although Francois Darlin, commander of the French Navy, had vowed he would scuttle every ship in the event of a takeover, Churchill did not trust him and feared the Nazis' control of the French Navy was imminent. His back against the wall, Churchill drew up a plan dubbed Operation Catapult to secure the French Navy. Churchill sent a fleet of ships to offer the French three options. They could, one, sail all their ships into British ports. Two, sail their ships alongside British ships as part of an Allied force. Or three, send their entire Navy to the West Indies or United States. And what if the French did not comply? Churchill knew he would have to make the most agonizing decision of his life to launch a military attack on a country that was England's ally and friend. The British Navy's main fleet sailed to a Mediterranean port near Oman, Algeria, where it intercepted the strongest part of the French fleet still moored there. British Admiral James Somerville issued orders to mine the port to prevent escape and dispatched Captain Cedric Holland to board the French destroyer Dunkirk to deliver Churchill's ultimatum to French Admiral Marcel Bruno Gensoul. Gensoul stalled, hoping for reinforcements, but Somerville contacted Churchill with a full report and asked how to proceed. Churchill's reply was ominous and direct. He simply said, settle matters. The French were sitting ducks. 
on July 3, 1940 at 5.54 p.m., Admiral Somerville ordered a broadside attack on the French fleet in the harbor. Ten minutes later, every French ship was disabled or destroyed. The attack killed nearly 1,300 French sailors and wounded 350. A greater toll than France suffered during any campaign against the Germans. Two British sailors also died. French officials were livid. They attempted a weak retaliation on the British fleet at Gibraltar, but nothing came of it. Operation Catapult saw no additional incidents as the British boarded French ships in other ports, or the French willingly sailed with them. France broke off diplomatic relations with England, but in a strange and awkward relationship, the countries remained allies against the Germans during the war. Churchill was haunted by the decision he had made. He was certain he would be ostracized for attacking a friendly country, but when he reported his actions to Parliament, he was shocked to see the news received with wild cheering. As tragic as the incident was, he had likely saved many more British lives than the number lost by the French. As for President Roosevelt, there is some indication he knew what Churchill planned in advance of the action. Still, he was awestruck by Churchill's resolve and decisiveness. He responded by sending Churchill the 50 destroyers Churchill had requested. In the long run, he came to realize the agonizing decision Churchill had to make prevented Hitler from dominating the seas. It isn't an exaggeration to conclude Operation Catapult ultimately was a major factor in the Allied victory in World War II. Churchill's resolve to carry out Operation Catapult sealed Franklin Roosevelt's admiration for him. Many other important leaders as well were complimentary of the action. As for Churchill himself, he wrote, This was the most hateful decision, the most unnatural and painful, in which I have ever been connected. It was, in the final analysis, a decision which, in fact, took the ultimate measure of wisdom and strength. For the Whence Came You podcast, this is Steve Harrison with the Masonic Minute.